Well, hey everybody, this is Robert, and welcome to today's Outbreak Newscast. And we're going to be taking a look at something interesting out of the West Coast of America. Now, the Los Angeles County Veterinary Public Health reports that from 2009 to 2024, the county has seen 24 cases of histoplasmosis in domestic animals, in 18 cats and six dogs, in which 18 cases or 75% either died or were euthanized due to severe illness. Five of these cases were reported since the beginning of 2024. Now, officials say all cases appear to have been locally acquired infection within L.A. County. The cases were reported from a wide geographic range, including in the San Fernando Valley and the Crescenta Valley, the San Gabriel Valley, Southeast L.A. County, and in the South Bay Area. Veterinary officials described the clinical signs of the animals, which were variable. There were 18 cases in cats. The majority had weight loss, followed by respiratory signs and or visible lesions in the lungs seen on thoracic radiographs. Five had ocular signs, three had bone lesions, and one had skin lesions. Only a few had a documented fever. Just under half were tested for feline leukemia and feline immunodeficiency viruses, and were mostly negative, although one cat had an equivocal result on the feline immunodeficiency virus test. There were six cases in dogs. Five had a documented fever. Four had gastrointestinal signs. Three had respiratory signs. Two had skin lesions, and one had bone lesions. Now, it's unclear how these animals were exposed to the fungus. None of the pets had traveled to the eastern half of the United States, where this fungus is mostly found, and most pets had no reported travel at all. There were no reported bat roosts linked to the cases. In a few cases, pets did have direct or indirect access to wild bird feces. In several cases, there was a tree trim near the house in the month before illness occurred. And it is possible that fungal spores were aerosolized from bat or bird feces in the trimming process. But the significance of this exposure is not known. One of the more striking findings was that 13 of the 18 cat cases, or 72%, occurred in indoor-only cats. LA County veterinarians may be unaware that cases can occur locally. Now, histoplasmosis, um, also known as Darling's disease, is a systemic fungal disease that can range in severity from symptom-free to minor self-limited to life-threatening illnesses. Infection is quite common, but clinical disease is not. The fungus that causes histoplasmosis is called histoplasma capsulatum. This is a dimorphic fungus that grows as a mold in the environment and soil and as a yeast in the human or animal tissue. The disease is seen in many areas of the world to include the Americas, Africa, Eastern Asia, and Australia. It is rarely seen in Europe. In the U.S., histoplasma capsulatum is endemic in the Mississippi River Valley, the Ohio River Valley, and along the Appalachian Mountains. The fungus is found in soil with undisturbed bird droppings, in old chicken houses, in bat caves, and around starling, blackbird, and pigeon roost. The fungus multiplies in bird droppings and bat guano. Now disturbing these contaminated areas and the wind can easily transport infectious fungal particles. Infections in humans and animals are typically due to inhalation of the airborne fungus. Histoplasma capsulatum is not transmissible directly from an infected animal to another animal or to a person or person to person. And cats are considered to be more susceptible to infection than dogs. Other animals can get histoplasmosis also besides cats and dogs, uh, cattle, horses, skunks, possums, among others. 
Now, diagnosis can be difficult because the clinical signs mimic those of many other diseases. Clinical signs in dogs and cats are variable and may include loss of appetite, difficulty breathing, fever, weight loss, bone lesions, intraocular or periocular lesions, diarrhea, which can be tarry or bloody stool, and skin lesions. Gastrointestinal signs such as chronic diarrhea may be more common in dogs than cats. The speed and the severity of clinical signs vary depending on the species of animal and the amount of fungus that was inhaled and the immune system of that animal. The majority of infections are thought to be subclinical. Illness can be acute with clinical signs worsening over days or chronic with signs lasting weeks or months. And after successful treatment, relapse is still possible. Now, the incubation period in dogs and cats is about two to three weeks. In some cases, the immune system may control the initial infection, but leave the animal latently infected. What does that mean? Well, these animals can become ill when the immune system is later suppressed. In those animals, it is possible for the apparent incubation period to be years. Now, the majority of infections in humans, about 90 to 95% are asymptomatic or self-limiting flu-like illness. Others may have symptoms associated with active pulmonary disease, night sweats, cough, fever, and weight loss. Now, in some people, the fungus disseminates through the bloodstream to the spleen, liver, kidneys, mouth, eyes, or the central nervous system. Now, disseminated histoplasmosis is especially dangerous in immunocompromised individuals and can result in a rapidly fulminant disease. Over 50% of AIDS patients from endemic areas develop histoplasmosis. Symptoms typically appear within 10 days, but may be shorter in heavy infections. Now, histoplasmosis can be diagnosed by chest radiographs and laboratory culture. A biopsy culture of the affected organ and blood cultures are best. Treatment varies depending on the anatomical site of the infection with the fungus. The Infectious Diseases Society of America, or the IDSA, does have published treatment guidelines that you can find online. And there is currently no reliable way of preventing histoplasmosis. And there is no way to completely eliminate histoplasma from the environment. Since the fungal spores may be present in higher amounts in bat and bird feces, it is strongly recommended to take precautions when cleaning up bat or bird feces, especially if they are in closed-in, poorly ventilated areas. In such situations, preventing aerosolization of the feces by not sweeping or vacuuming or kicking up dust in the air is recommended. Wear a high level of respiratory protection and use wet cleaning methods such as spraying disinfectant on the area before cleaning. And I'll take you back about 25 to 30 years when histoplasmosis made the news, back in 1997 actually. And this is when rock legend Bob Dylan was stricken with a fungal infection of the sac surrounding his heart. Now he was successfully treated and released from the hospital. And Dylan was quoted as saying, when this was all over, I'm just glad to be feeling better. I really thought I'd be seeing Elvis soon. Thanks for listening.